Why? She's like, you're a little dark. <laughs> you're, you're a little broody. He's like, am I? I think I smile a lot. Apparently not. <laughs> you can pull off either. You have the hair for Superman. You have good no, hair. But then, then like Superman curl comes down, right? Right. <laughs> this is like I literally I wake up and I just do this for hours. <laughs> I've been doing it for like 20 years now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I'm just like it's a hot mess. Curly hair unite. Mm -hmm. There you go. It drives the people on my uh, on my TV show crazy though, because the everybody like hair the hair team comes over every time is like. Blink. <laughs> Blink. Spray and it's like it has a it's like a force of nature in and of itself. It's like no, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. But I, I I love this stuff. I and uh, I I consider myself a huge fan, but like the least knowledgeable fan ever, <laughs> which is a shame. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Up. It really is. Yeah. Like, it's like what decades of material that you'd have to study and learn. And I mean, it's, it, I, I'm in awe of people who uh, are truly knowledgeable about everything. I, we, I was walking around yesterday with uh, Jason, who I don't know if he's if he's back there or out here now, but uh, huh? there he is. <laughs> Dude, we, we stopped into oh sorry uh, we we stopped into a couple of uh, comic book. Uh, shop stands, uh, booths, and he's like, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome, and I was like, I've never even heard of any of this, <laughs> and I'm the easiest mark, because I was like, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that. <laughs> just That's open, awesome. yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, there are a lot of, like, local artists here, too, which is pretty great, but they're able to do their own thing, make their own Superman, it's pretty rad. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm just now getting onto the whole Funko train. Oh yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I picked up an Eli and Peyton Manning Funko yesterday. Ooh. I'm from Indianapolis, so... Boom. Boom. Got some Colts fans Sorry, in here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Broncos fans? Bears yeah. fans. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, you're in the belly of the beast here. Yeah, I know. Bears. That's right. Well, speaking of studying, so with Chicago Med, have you had, did you have to, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but I've always been curious, when you're on those shows, do you have to study ahead of time, or they're like, okay, you're this kind of doctor, here's like a go-to book of terms to learn? You know? So it was actually pretty cool. We did a whole, like, um, we did like a, uh, a two-week boot camp where we tried, where somebody tried to cram like eight years of medical knowledge <laughs> into two weeks. So that worked. <laughs> uh, but... Um, it's been a lot of like, we were really, the first half of the season, of the first season was like this huge steep learning curve where we were like, we have to get it right, we have to be super accurate, and like figuring out how to be like real world medically accurate and like TV world medically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, any doctors or nurses or hospital staff out there. Uh, and this season now it's like, Oh, that's a spoon. Put it in my hand. Cool. I'll use it like a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they sort of. I mean, there's. So we've we've gotten a lot more comfortable over the course of the uh, of the first season, especially in coming back season two. It's um, it's a lot. There's like five procedures basically that you need to know to be a TV doctor. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <That's it>. uh, <laughs> but and it, because they show up again and again. Um, not that they're, because they are the most prevalent procedures that happen. So like, you know, you want to make sure you look real when you're doing compressions on somebody and not going like, like, you know, like, but the, the, I, I don't know if any of you have learned CPR before, but like, Stayin' Alive is the song that you're supposed to sing in your head. That really gets in the way of lines. <laughs> Quick little story, because all my stories are Quick. Uh, first day of shooting for the first, sorry, second day of shooting, no, first day. First day of shooting for the first season, uh, we did a huge scene on the L train that was actually moving. And they like found this like, this is a tangent, sorry. Uh, they like found this cool, if any of you saw it, it was like, you know, the, the train crashes and yada, 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 bad things happen. But like, they found, we were on an actual L train. And so, like, they would 
get it going, and then slam on the brakes to simulate the crash. Cool in theory, <laughs> kind of hurts in real life. <laughs> and they found this like really, they, first they were like, oh, we'll take it up to 30 miles an hour. The faster we go, the harder the brakes will slam, right? Yeah, it sort of like skids to a stop, so you're like, G -g 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 -g. and then they slowed it way down, and then it was like, eh. <laughs> and then they found a sweet spot right around like 24 miles an hour, where literally they slam on the brakes, and it's like, bam. So we were that in that sweet spot, and we had no idea what was going to happen. And I would had been sort of like throwing myself a little bit when we were simulating the crash. And so all of a sudden, it literally is if I was jumping into the fourth row. <laughs> I was like, cool, what? <laughs> and everybody around went, uh, Colin, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, fine. <laughs> But back to the original story. Uh, so we were like, huge setup, we're like, it's post-crash, and I'm bringing this guy in, and I'm like, like standing on top of a, uh, of a, of a uh, stretcher, and like, we're like, doing compressions on a guy, gotta spout out a bunch of medical stuff all at once, and the yell action, there's like, tons and tons of people around, I'm like, really wanting to impress everybody. And all I can think of is so I got two words out. Two words, and I was like, yeah! Sorry! Can we reset it? Which is like a 10 minute reset. They're like, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of information you have to like retain, you know. It's a lot of uh, words that. Um, don't really mean anything to me. <laughs> they do, once I know them and figure them out. But when you look at a word that has like 17 syllables, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I didn't go to school for eight years. You pull it off well though, we believe you. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> well, since you're starting on this new show, which is an awesome show, mm -hmm. with all the time travel worldness stuff of the DC verse, can we get a, can we get some Tommy action? Yeah. yeah, I think we agree. We'd like to see you back. Wait, quick poll. How many people were gonna ask that question? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just get it out of the way. Like, uh, we're, we're gonna talk about this the rest of the time. Uh, please. <laughs> I'm assuming you probably can't say anything about it. I can't. Well, I can say stuff about it. Uh, I think it's an awesome rumor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Solid. I love it. I, I think that like it was funny because I, I saw the article like all of you did and I retweeted the hell out of it because <laughs> uh, I love the idea and in fact I'll tell you about a conversation that Andrew Pressburg and I had um, we had dinner and I mean keep in mind this is long before I had another series uh, uh, everybody involved with Arrow has been extremely kind to me after season one of bringing me back when I was available, when it fitted with the storyline. Um, and I love going back. I love it. And I would absolutely jump at the chance to have more stuff to do with Steven or John Barrowman. Maybe we could, maybe Felicity and Tommy could meet somewhere. I know that's probably smart. <laughs> I literally Jared just say things. It's like, oh God! <laughs> Uh, as of right now, I'm very busy in Chicago, uh, and I love it here, and I, and yes. <laughs> uh, Chicago is not only an awesome city, but our show is incredible, and uh, I really like it. So, as of right now, they are just rumors. I will perpetuate the hell out of them. <laughs> because I love it. <laughs> we'll help. Yes. We'll help we'd love to see that. Yeah, thank you. So what was it like having John Barrowman as your dad? Like, could you even get through a scene with the guy? I mean... <laughs> I'm like trying to pick stories out of my brain. Is that one? Is that one? Is that where did he No, there is, uh, I mean, come on, he's John Barrowman. He could, like, 
he just, he's, he's incredible. He's so much fun. But I, one story in particular, like, uh, springs to mind. There is, we were shooting in this, um, this really cool place in Vancouver with a giant escalator. And it was, uh, when he was accepting, when, when Malcolm was accepting some sort of award and I was in the crowd and I showed up and, and uh, all the shooting panicky stuff starts and he drags me out, right? So there's this massive escalator that walks, that goes up to the second floor and we had to run up and down it 30 times. <laughs> but the down one was working. <laughs> so after like the first take, John was like, uh, what can we sing? I was like, anything. He's like, all right. We're gonna come down the escalator and just spout out some anything goes. <laughs> so literally, it's the two of us in tuxedos, like dancing our way down the escalator <laughs> in front of a crowd of probably 150 people. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I love it. He's like the he's the consummate performer, and he's incredible, and he's like so generous and lovely and wonderful, and and. Um, you know, come by our booth, we'll have some shenanigans at some point today. I'm gonna steal his Tim Tam Tower. <laughs> That's fighting words, isn't it? Speaking of singing, you are a musician of sorts, a singer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have been on the Broadway. Uh, that's what we call it. It's the Broadway. I've also been on the Off-Broadway. I've also been on the National Tour. And I've also performed in my shower for many people. <laughs> <laughs> Those many people being myself. <laughs> and my wife. But, uh, no, actually, funny story. I was, so New York um, apartment buildings are old. Yeah? So, and they're like, so, and literally it was like, <laughs> it was as if somebody shot me with a hand cannon. <laughs> like, I had stood in front of like one of these old Civil War cannons and they had lit the fuse and I stood there and then flew back 50 feet to the wall. I watched it back on TV. I rewound it like 10 times. <laughs> Because I was so blown away by my terrible acting. <laughs> it was so wretchedly bad. I was like, how the hell did they let me get away with this? <laughs> Didn't somebody like go, mm, you took that? <laughs> no. No, they let me do that. And it was awful. And it's preserved on TV. Don't forget, film is forever. <laughs> hey, you can look that up somewhere, like season two or three of Unforgettable. It is the worst death in the history of television. <laughs> Just like the biggest over. It, I might as well have been in like a 20s, like black and white movie, being like, eh. <laughs> Well, oddly enough, we actually have the clip. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna queue it up for my next panel. <laughs> I used to second guess myself a lot when it comes to music, and now it's just kind of. Well, I'm gonna say Lenny. I'm gonna go with Lenny. 